Pat's Two Cents, we have a powerful word from Lynette. God bless you. God bless you. I want to talk to you today about the way of love, something that the Lord gave me about his ways, because God is love. And that's going to be from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and I'm going to read a portion of it from the ESV, that's the English Standard Version. If I speak in tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a plain symbol. And if I have a prophetic power and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It's not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endure all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, that when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man or a woman, I gave a childish way, for now we see in a mirror dimly. But... Then face to face, now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. So now faith, hope, and love abide these, these three. But the greatest of these is love. This is what the Lord wants all of us to know. And this is what he came to me and shared with me personally and then told me to share it publicly with this gathering with you, brothers and sisters, and it's an honor to share it with you. He said to me, he says, you know, you do a lot of stuff for me. You know, you pray for other people. You're doing this and you're doing that. But I want you to know that there's a deficit. I'm like, what do you mean by that, Father? What, what are you talking about? He says, I don't want you to do all this stuff for me. He says, I'll explain it to you like this where you can understand it. It's like a, a newlywed couple, you know. You marry each other and you're, you're in love and there's intimacy in the beginning. I mean, just sitting on the porch together, not saying anything, just being together, just the presence of one another. Not even, you know, anything sexual going on, just enjoying in one another's presence. He said... There was a time when you just enjoy just being in my presence, just sitting at my feet. There was a time when you would just sing songs to me. You would minister to me. And I miss my time with you. And I'm like, Lord, I didn't know. He said, yes, it is the same as marriage. My relationship that I have with my body, with the body of Christ, the bride of Christ, is as a marriage is on earth. Because a, a man, when he marries his woman, he doesn't marry her for the good meals that she can cook and she keeps a clean house and she's running here and there with the kids and up and down the stairs and, you know, hi, honey, you know, and good morning and barely. He, he doesn't care about all that. That man wants more than anything. He wants her. He wants to spend time with his wife, with his bride, the present. He doesn't care about all of that cooking and cleaning and this and that. I'm going to do this for you and that and the other. And then the Lord gave me something else that I had forgot about. He said, there was a man that married a woman that he loved since high school, I mean, he was crazy about her, and he finally got her to say yes, and they got married, and 
we worked hard to make sure that she had everything. I mean, she had beautiful clothes, jewelry, cars, you name it. He made sure that his queen had everything. I mean, there was nothing this woman wanted for. So one day, he happens to come home early in the middle of the day, and he catches his sweetheart, his soulmate, his baby, his love, in an entanglement with the pool boy. He was devastated. He almost had a heart attack. And he said, I just want to ask you one question. He says, I love you so much. I give you everything. Look around. Look at this house. Look at, look at the diamonds that you have and all of this and that and the other. And she said to him, with tears in her eyes, but she was bitter. And she said, you know, that's true. You did do all of this stuff for me. But I didn't want all of that. You know what I wanted? I wanted you. You were working all the time. You were never here. I missed us going out to lunch and the talk, the things we used to do. And the moral to that story, and it is a true story, is that we, and I include myself, we get caught up in, well, I'm doing this for the Lord. I'm going out and I'm going to evangelize and I'm going to get to the poor and I'm going to feed folk and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And we totally have forgot what it's all about. When we first got saved, the Lord talks about this in Revelation. He says, you forgot your first love. What you used to do, I'm going to need you to do that. Whatever you were doing in the beginning, when you first fell in love with me, I need you to return to that. See, God is, a, is, is love. And he's, he's the greatest lover. He's the lover of our souls. Everybody on this phone that can hear me and that, who will hear it, you know, on the uh, video. He loves you. He's the lover of your soul. And he's interested. You know what he's interested in? You. We love you. With all your flaws and all your anger and issues and attitude, he loves it all. He says, I love you, period. And I want to spend time with you. I don't care about all that other stuff. And see, when we have intimacy, and I won't keep you long, I'm going to wrap it up, because God says it's real simple. What you did in the beginning, Lynette, what you were doing, you couldn't wait till the church doors open <laughs> when we could go to church. You you, you just had to have me morning to the night. You couldn't get enough of me. Remember? Yeah, Lord, I do. And you let your love get cold. See, God said that the love... But many would wax cold. Don't let your love wax cold. And he, he had to let me know. It's just like a husband letting his wife know, baby, we got to rekindle the fire because I, you know, I feel like I'm in this alone. I need you to be intimate with me. I miss our time together, and it hurts the Lord. It's not about not going to hell and, you know, I, I don't want to go to hell and all that. No, 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 no. It's about love. God did everything he did. Jesus died on that cross and took all of that torture and beating and all of that because he loves you so much and he wants you with him forever. He's in love with you, all of you, all of us. He loves us. He really does. So remember that throughout your day and when you're doing stuff. Am I walking in love? Am I just doing stuff? Because remember he said in 1 Corinthians, if you're doing all this stuff but you don't have love, you ain't nothing. You're making all kind of noise. You're talking loud and saying nothing. He said, if you don't have love, it don't mean nothing. Remember the woman who had the affair on her husband who loved her. Don't none of that stuff mean nothing if we ain't got love. You see what God is saying? Just get back to the loving and the intimacy when you first got saved. How you were on fire, how you couldn't wait. How it was just so sweet and God was just so enamored with you. Just so enamored. And see, when you keep that going, all that other stuff that David did, like Sister Pat was talking about before, you ain't you 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 know when you're when you're irritating your loved one. You you know when you're close when there's an intimacy, you know, we can avoid stuff like that. 
And I believe that's what the point in that story was, because I love that. David was a man after God's own heart. Mm -hmm. But God did check that behind, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And we don't want that to happen. But if we get back to that intimate part, we first got to say we were so in love, so in love. And if any of you have ever been in love, for real, with another person, you know how that is. You just can't wait. You just, just I just want to hear your voice. You fall asleep on the phone, sleeping with them on the other line and all that kind of stuff. That, that's what God is talking about. Yeah, God is a, a romantic. He is a romantic and he's wonderful. He really is. And when you are intimate with him and you remember what it's like to be in love with him, when stuff goes crazy, somebody dies, you know, a loved one or whatever, you know that whatever happened, you can trust him because you know underneath it all, he loves you, and he would never, never do anything to hurt you. So I'm going to leave you with that. Mm -hmm. And I thank you, Father, for allowing me to share that with my brothers mm -hmm. and sisters. It was an honor to do that. And thank you, Lord, for reminding me, come back to me. Come back to your first love. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lynette. You have got to ask God constantly to show you his love. That is all the difference, him loving you and you loving him. That is the foundation of this whole relationship. Amen. That's the right. whole thing is based on love. The whole thing. And love ain't about you scratch my back, I scratch my back. You, I, you know, I scratch your back, you scratch my back. No. With God, he loves us unconditionally. His agape love. That, but his love, he's not a flunky. He doesn't love us so much that he won't discipline us. He says, if I discipline you, it's because I love you. If I don't right. discipline you, that makes you a bastard. That's right. So whatever you do, get as close to him as possible. All the vicissitudes of life will be way more tolerable. If you know that you know that you know he loves you, he's for you, and you know that you love him. Because then Amen. when you love him, you'll trust him. Amen. Amen. God bless Amen. you as you draw close to him. A friend of mine, the song goes, I miss my time with you. These moments right. together. I need to be with you each day. But it hurts me when you say you're too busy. Too busy trying to please me. But how can right. you serve me? If your spirit's empty, there's a longing in my heart wanting more than just a part of you. It's true. I miss my time with you. Yeah. God bless you. Thank you so much, Lynette. You're welcome. You're welcome.